وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to another episode from this series brought to you by Al Madrasa Al Umariya, the name of which is based upon the ayah, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمُ دُعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ And your Lord said, Call on me and I will answer you. Our topic, as has been the case throughout this series, is all about dua, how to make dua, the etiquettes of dua, what causes your dua to be accepted, some of the obstacles in making dua as well as an explanation of some of the ad'iyah, which are jami'ah, some of the dua of the Prophet ﷺ, which is very comprehensive in nature. We're still talking about certain etiquettes of dua, and if you recall, uh, a couple of episodes ago, what we did is to kind of summarize the etiquettes of dua, and we still have a few that require a little bit of extra uh, explanation. So one of the most important etiquettes of dua is to precede your request with the praise of Allah Azza wa Jal, describing Allah in the way that he described himself and the way that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam described him. This is a very, very common feature of the dua of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And really there are two things that we need to, to highlight and be very clear about. The first is that the virtue of preceding what you say by praising Allah Azza wa Jal and some examples of that. And the second is what words do we use or what are the, what, what are the limitations or what are the sort of the conditions or the things that you should use to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with. So if we deal with the first one first and we look at the the sunnah of the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when we look at examples from the Qur'an, then perhaps the biggest example we can put forward from the Qur'an is Surah Al-Fatiha. Where is the request in Surah Al-Fatiha? Uh, you could say that the request begins with إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ uh, that there is an implied request in that of seeking help from Allah. But the, the, the most obvious request in Surah Al-Fatiha the, is to, when you say ihdina sirat al mustaqim that's the 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 most the clearest part where you where you're directly asking allah azza wa jal for something in reality when you say iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in you are asking allah you're asking allah for his help uh, to worship him you're asking allah azza wa jal to, and you're seeking help from him but the the sort of the first time where we have just a simple request a plain and simple request in Surah Al-Fatiha is إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ mustaqim. Let's go back then. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawm Al-Deen Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'in إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ mustaqim. How did we start Surah Al-Fatiha? We started it with the praise of Allah Azza wa Jal Alhamd Alhamdulillah All praise belongs to Allah Allah is deserving of all praise. Why is Allah deserving of all praise? Because He is Rabbul Alameen. He is Rabbul Alameen. He has the Asma'ul Husna. He has the perfect and beautiful names. And He has Sifat Al Ulya, the highest and most lofty of attributes. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, from the attributes uh, and from the most comprehensive or among the very comprehensive names and attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal is Ar-Rabb and Allah's Rububiyya, Allah's Lordship, because that gathers together all of Allah's names and attributes within it, Ar-Rububiyya, within the Lordship of Allah. So by calling upon Allah, by praising Him and praising Him because of His names and His attributes and His actions, this is a, a clear example of the etiquette of preceding your dua by praising Allah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And it continues. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. That, that is implying, again, there's an implied, uh, that each of those has an implication. Uh, 
when you say Rabbul Alameen, you're implying your need of Allah to, to nurture you and to take care of you and to provide for you and to guide you and so on. Because all of that is part of Allah's rububiyyah, part of Allah's lordship. And when you say Ar-Rahman Rahim, there's an implied request for Allah's mercy. Uh, but this praise of Allah Azza wa Jal, Maliki Yawmiddin, the sovereign of the day of recompense. All of this is from the praise of Allah Azza wa Jal prior to the point where you actually ask Allah for what it is that you want. You're asking Allah to guide you to the straight path. So this is a really, really beautiful example that you can put forward for the praise of Allah Azza wa Jal. And it can be applied across the board when you're making dua, that you precede your dua with praise of Allah Azza wa Jal. And what further clarifies uh, Surah Al-Fatiha in this regard is a hadith that was narrated by Imam Muslim from the hadith of Abi Hurairah radiallahu an. Annahu qal sami'tu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul. He said, I heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, qal Allah ta'ala, Allah the Exalted said, qasamtu salata bayni wa bayna abdi nisrain. I divided the prayer, i.e. Surah Al-Fatiha, I divided it between me and my servant in half. Wali abdi ma sa'al. And my servant will have what they asked for. فَإِذَا قَالَ الْعَبْدِ أَلْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى حَمَدَنِي عَبْدِي So when the servant says, Alhamdu لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ All praises for Allah, Lord of the worlds. Allah the Exalted says, حَمَدَنِي عَبْدِي My servant has praised me. وَإِذَا قَالَ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى أَثْنَى عَلَيَّ عَبْدِي And when the servant says Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Allah the Exalted says that my servant has أَثْنَى عَلَيْهِ has mentioned, uh, has mentioned my praise, has mentioned my praise. The first one relates to Alhamd specifically, and the second one is a general type of praise, has generally praised me. وَإِذَا قَالْ مَالِكِ يَوْمِ الدِّينِ قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى مَجَّدَنِي عَبْدِي And when the servant says, Maliki يَوْمِ الدِّينِ Sovereign of the Day of Recompense, Allah the Exalted says, مَجَّدَنِي abdi, My servant has glorified me. So all of this here is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is uh, an example of dua al-ibadah. It is an example of a dua where you're not asking for something specific but you are praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're glorifying Allah azza wa jal and you're mentioning the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَإِذَا قَالْ إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ قَالَ هَذَا بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَ عَبْدِي وَلِعَبْدِ مَا سَأَلْ And when the servant says, you alone we worship and you alone we ask for help, Allah says, this is between me and my servant. And that's because there's an element of this which is from the, uh, the praise of Allah Azza wa Jal, uh, mentioning Allah's deserving to be worshipped and coming near to Allah by mentioning the fact that we're worshipping him, uh, we worshiping him alone. But there's also an implied request, which is to, for Allah to help you to worship him. Uh, and that's why there is a part of that which is a request and a part of it which is an example of dua al-ibadah, which is an example of the dua when you're not asking for something specific, um, but you are praising Allah and you are coming near to Allah with these words. فَإِذَا قَالْ إِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ صِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِينَ and when the servant says, اهدنا الصراط المستقيم, guide us to the straight path, the path of those upon whom you have bestowed your favor, not those who have earned your anger or those who are astray, قال Allah Azza wa Jal says, هذا لعبدي ولعبدي ما سأل. This is for my slave and my slave will have what they asked for. In other words, that is the request that comes after the praise of Allah Azza wa Jal. Now we want to be clear here that the praise of Allah Azza wa Jal here it doesn't benefit Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah doesn't need you to praise Him. Allah isn't benefited by the actions of His creation, nor is He harmed by the action of His creation. He's much greater than that 
and much more perfect than that, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rather, we only say that this is for Allah, means that it doesn't have a, a request in it for the servant. It doesn't have something that you're asking for. Rather, you're praising Allah because He deserves it. Lillahi, it's deserving for Allah Azza wa Jalla. Allah deserves for you to praise Him. And ultimately, that's benefiting you. You're getting the reward of praising Allah, but you're gaining nearness to Allah. You're coming near to Allah by mentioning those names and attributes and actions and, and glorifying Him and praising Him. You're coming near to Allah. And it's from the greatest of the forms of tawassul, of getting near to Allah. وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا To Allah belong the greatest of names. So call upon Allah with them from the greatest of means of getting near to Allah. And that is preceded before your request and then the request comes. And that is better in terms of etiquette than just saying اِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ For example, in a, in a regular dua, of course, in Surah Al-Fatiha, you don't have a choice whether to, you know, which parts to say. But if it was a regular dua, instead of just saying Allahumma ahdini or Allah guide me, to precede it with words of praise, with uh, mentioning appropriate names and attributes of Allah that bring you nearer to Allah, that are appropriate to your request, and then asking Allah for what it is that you want. This is from the great ways to get your dua uh, accepted and to gain extra nearness uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I give an example from the examples of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his dua, so we can see something outside of Surah Al-Fatiha. The hadith of Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhuma, Allahumma lak alhamd, anta nur al-samawati wal-ardi wa man fihim, wa lak alhamd, anta qayyum al-samawati wal-ardi wa man fihim, wa lak alhamd, anta al-haq, wa wa'aduka haq, wa liqa'uka haq, wa al-jannatu haq, wa al-naru haq, wa al-nabiyyuna haq, wa al-sa'atu haq, wa muhammadun sallallahu alayhi wa sallam haq. اللهم لك أسلمت وبك آمنت وعليك توكلت وإليك أنبت وبك خاصمت وإليك حاكمت فاغفر لي ما قدمت وما أخرت وما أسررت وما أعلنت أنت إلهي لا إله إلا أنت Oh Allah, to you belongs all praise. You are the nur, the light of the heavens and the earth and whatever is in them. And to you belongs all praise. You are the sustainer of the heavens and the earth and whatever is in them. And to you belongs all praise. You are Al-Haq. You are Al-Haq, the name of Allah Azza wa Jal, Al-Haq, the truth. Your promise is true. Meeting you, i.e. Yawm Al-Qiyamah, is true. Jannah is true. The hellfire is true. The prophets are true. The hour is true. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is true. Oh Allah, I have submitted myself to you and I have believed in you and I have placed my trust in you and I have repented to you and for your sake I have argued and to you I have left judgment. So forgive me what has proceeded from me and what is yet to come and what I have done secretly and what I have done openly, you are my God, I my object of worship and there is no God worthy of worship except you. Notice the different types of tawassul that are found in this dua of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and how the actual request, where does the request come? After all of that, you go through all of that dua, the request comes where? Faghfirli. Forgive me, forgive me. Prior to that, there is a long introduction of praising Allah. All praises for you. Mentioning that Allah is Nur al-Samawati wal ard the light of the heavens and the earth. That Allah is the sustainer of the heavens and the earth. That Allah is true and His promise is true and His meeting is true and Jannah is true and so on. Uh, that is coming near to Allah through. So the beginning is the praise of Allah, then coming near to Allah through our belief. And that is from the greatest of the good deeds that you can come near to Allah with, is to come near to Allah through your Iman, through what you believe, your Aqeedah, what you hold to be true, that I believe is to be true. 
coming close to Allah by mentioning your good deeds. Oh Allah, I have submitted myself to you and believed in you and trusted in you and repented to you and argued for your sake and rendered judgment or and have left judgment to you. After all of that, praising Allah and coming near to Allah Azza wa Jal through your belief and coming near to Allah Azza wa Jal through the good deeds that you have done. And then after all of that, فغفرلي, forgive me. Forgive me. And then even at the end, it still comes back to the same concept. Anta ilahi. You are my God, my object of worship. There is no object of worship but you. And that is again coming back to uh, praising Allah through his names and attributes because one of his names is Al-Ilah, uh, the one who is worshipped. And likewise through your belief, which is La ilaha illallah. Uh, and this is just another example of praising Allah Azza wa Jal. Now it's still permissible when you make dua for you just to simply make dua. For you just say, Allahumma ghfirli, Rabbi ghfirli, my Lord forgive me, oh Allah forgive me. But for you to praise Allah Azza wa Jal like that, that is definitely something which is from the etiquettes of dua, which we find throughout the dua of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So it's something that we should, uh, we should make a habit of doing uh, and we should try our best to it make it a feature of our dua as much as we can. Uh, and again, you know, in, in general, we're going to stick to the wording of the Prophet ﷺ. Because what sometimes people might try and do is to try and bring something from their own side. And this is where we come to the second part of what I said we would explain in this point, which is how you praise Allah. How do you praise Allah? It's very important that you praise Allah the way that He praised Himself. And we can take this from uh, the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, لا أحصي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك. I cannot enumerate praise of you. I can't praise you. I can't find words that do justice to praise you with. You are as you praised yourself. And it's so important because so many people could in their dua try to praise Allah with words from themselves, which actually are examples of speaking about Allah without knowledge or saying something inappropriate about Allah uh, or just not doing a good job of it. Uh, whereas to use the words that the Prophet Wasallam used and to praise Allah the way that Allah praised himself, this is what is required from a Muslim in their dua. So you want to try as much as possible to stick to the wording of the Prophet Wasallam when you do bring a dua from yourself occasionally, as we said, it shouldn't be a regular thing, but an occasional time that you don't find the right words from the hadith and, and from the sunnah and you bring some uh, request from yourself, you try in terms of your praise to take the praise of Allah Azza wa Jal that you praise him with from the words that were said by the Prophet Sallallahu and from what Allah said about himself. Because as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Anta kama asnayta ala nafsik. You are as you praised yourself. And so we, we need Allah to teach us how to praise him. And we don't want to be inventing something that doesn't have an evidence or doesn't have something, a basis in, in the religion. There are other uh, things that we should be proceeding or we should be bringing into our dua around our request, either before or after. And one of the most important is to send a salatu wa salam ala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Is to ask Allah to exalt the mention and grant peace to our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And uh, it's not really, we're not going to go into too much detail about the meaning of that, uh, but a salah is for Allah Azza wa Jal to exalt the mention of the Prophet Sallallahu in al Malay Al-A'la to mention the Prophet Sallallahu and his noble qualities to the angels and those who are near to Allah Azza wa Jal. And the salam is for Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala to uh, send peace or to send security and safety upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam across all of the different you know, situations and all of the things that that implies. So as salat wa salam, Allah Azza wa Jal commanded us to send salat and salam upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Indeed, Allah and His angels send salat upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 
all you who believe, send salah upon the Prophet Sallallahu and send salam upon him. So that is a command from Allah Azza wa Jal. And that command can in, be included or it can, what can be included within that is dua. So from the sunnah in dua is to proceed your dua and to conclude your dua with a salatu was salam ala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So there are different ways of doing this. Uh, from the different ways of doing this is that you first of all uh, send salat and salam upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after praising Allah Azza wa Jal at the beginning of your dua or you do at the end of your dua or the beginning and the middle and the end. And Imam Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala he said فَمِفْتَاحُ الدُّعَاءِ الصَّلَاةُ عَلَى النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ كَمَا أَنَّ مِفْتَاحَ الصَّلَاةِ الطُّهُورِ He said that the key to dua is sending salah and salam upon the Prophet Sallallahu just like the key to salah, the key to praying is wudu or purification. And in this regard, we have an amazing hadith, hadith of Fadala bin Ubaid radiallahu an, annahu qal, sami'a al-nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a rajulun yad'u fi salatih, falam yusalli ala al-nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam heard a man making dua in his prayer without having sent salah upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ عَجَّلَ هَذَا The Prophet said, this man has been hasty. ثُمَّ دَعَاهُ Then he called him. He, made, he, he invited him to come. فَقَالَ لَهُ وَلِغَيْرِهِ He said to him and everyone else who was there. إِذَا صَلَّ أَحَدُكُمْ فَلْيَبْدَأْ بِتَحْمِيدِ اللَّهِ وَالثَّنَاءِ عَلَيْهِ If one of you prays, let him begin with the hamd of Allah and by mentioning Allah's praise. ثُمَّ يُصَلِّي عَلَى النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم. Then let him send salah upon the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. ثُمَّ يَدْعُو بَعْدُ بِمَا شَاءَ Then let him make dua after that for whatever, for whatever he wants. And even though this particular uh, hadith is talking about the tashahud, which also follows the same pattern, التَّحِيَّاتُ لِلَّهِ وَالصَّلَوَاتُ وَالطَّيِّبَاتُ and then it talks about Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammad and then comes the dua. That is a general rule for dua in, in general. And that we, we make an effort to apply that in our dua, that we regularly uh, send a salah or salam upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For this reason, Abu Sulaiman Darani, he said, Man arada an yas'al Allah hajata. Whoever wants to ask Allah for a need, فليبدأ بالصلاة على النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وليسأل حاجته. Whoever wants to ask Allah for a need, let him begin by sending salah upon the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and ask for that need. وليختم بالصلاة على النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم and let him finish his dua by sending salah upon the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. فإن الصلاة على النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم مقبولة. Because sending salah upon the Prophet ﷺ is something accepted by Allah. Wallahu akram an yuradda ma baynahuma. And Allah is more generous than not, than not accepting what is between them. Yani Allah is so generous, He will accept what is between them. So you don't know your dua in the middle. Is it going to be accepted by Allah or not? But if you bring something at the beginning which is accepted, and something at the end which is accepted, then Allah, through His infinite generosity and mercy, will accept what is, what is in the middle. So that brings us to the conclusion of this episode. And we're going to be continuing on in the next episode, inshaAllah ta'ala, with some more etiquettes and some of the things to be careful of when making dua. And Allah Azza wa Jalla knows best. Wa salatu wa salam ala Nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How can you do a two second action right now that will give you a share of the reward of everything we're doing on this YouTube channel? Simple, like this video and click subscribe. Why? It will allow YouTube to recommend our videos to other users and imagine the huge amount of reward that could be waiting for you on the day of judgment if you did that with a sincere intention of spreading the Deen of Allah. 
You'll be rewarded for every single person who benefits from one of our videos as a result of your like or subscribe. That's an easy two second action that you definitely don't want to miss out on. Do it now, click like and subscribe and don't forget to make that intention.